Hi everyone, welcome to Sugar Glider Diaries. I'm Kimberly. Here's Raven and Balky, Bruce, and Miss Pika Girl. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to decorate and fill your sugar glider cage. So before we get too far into the video, I just wanna talk about my <laughs> my merch. So I'm going to show you some cute videos of the merch that I provide, fun things that, that support the channel. So if you want to support my channel, please consider uh, getting something from the merch store. I had this tie-dye shirt. So this doesn't come tie-dyed, but I did like a bleach tie-dye and I really love how it turned out. I hope you like it. And I've been trying to come up with some different creative ways of pairing my merch shirts. She really likes my necklace. Okay, so when you're getting your sugar glider cage, there's a lot of different tips and tricks that I'm gonna talk about for how I like to set my cage up. There's not really a right or wrong way as long as it's safe. So I'm gonna talk about the safety things that you wanna keep in mind first, and also the right size of cage. So you definitely don't want a tiny little cage. I'm a very big advocate that bigger is better when it comes to cages for sugar gliders. They are arboreal animals. They love to be able to jump and glide and they're used to being able to have a lot of free space. So putting them in a tiny cage isn't what's gonna be best for their mental health. They could get very depressed. They could self mutilate and it's just not gonna be a good long-term solution for them. I personally have the double critter nation cage and that is the only one that I have experience with that I recommend. So that's the cage that I'm going to refer to in this video. There are other cages that work fine, um, but I don't have any experience with those cages specifically. As a general rule, I really try to not recommend things that I don't have any personal experience with. I'm not an expert on sugar gliders, so I try just to only share my personal experiences. There is kind of an outdated myth that if you get new sugar gliders, you want to have a tiny cage or a very small cage while they're small so that they can bond with you and then you can upgrade them to a bigger cage. Please, no, no, no! I personally don't subscribe to that uh, idea. I've always had my gliders in a nice large cage and it has not inhibited the bonding at all. All that really does is make you buy multiple cages. You could do that for a very short period of time and use the small cage as like an emergency travel cage but unfortunately, what ends up happening more often than not is that people buy a small cage meaning to upgrade later and then they don't for a very long time. I would never leave a glider in a tiny cage any longer than, you know, a few weeks, maybe a month. So to me, if you only can afford to buy a, a one cage initially, I wouldn't buy a small cage. The other safety factor is that you want to make sure that you are filling it with items that are safe for your glider. So you don't want to... Uh, by items that have been known to harm gliders that are not up to current safety standards. What was thought to be safe 10, 15, 20 years ago is oftentimes not thought to be safe for gliders now. So if you're looking at something that is advertised as safe, unfortunately there's no regulation on that. So in my personal opinion, what I recommend is not purchasing from Exotic Nutrition or Amazon for your cage sets or your toy items in the cage. There's a couple exceptions to Amazon and those are items that are not marketed for sugar gliders. I have one thing that's a little bird uh, dispenser and my gliders love that I put kibble in there. That's one thing and I also use these other things that you can hang bracelets on and I bought that from Amazon. You don't have to get that. That's not exclusively from Amazon. That's just where I found mine. So that's really the only thing from Amazon besides the feeding station, which with as many gliders as I have now, I actually don't even use the feeding station lid. I just leave it on the side of the cage. So that's not really necessary. It's fine for one or two gliders, but once you get past that, I found that they were kind of competing for that opening and I didn't want it to lead to food aggression. So unless you wanted to have multiple feeding stations in the cage at one time, that would be fine. But sometimes they're kind of like toddlers and they want what the other one has and they're going to shove themselves in that little hole. And I got a little bit concerned about that. So I took the lid off of the feeding station. But besides that, I don't use anything uh, for from Amazon in the cage 
as far as enrichment items for the glider. Um, I do have an Amazon video of things that I recommend. There are little things that you can buy, like I said, like two savers or things like that, that you can modify to use for gliders. But the things that are actually marketed for gliders, I don't recommend. I have a whole other video about that. So I will also link that video in the description box below as well. So the vendors that I personally use, I'm going to also put in the description box, but two of my favorites are the Shiggy Flower Fairy. She is on Facebook, but she also has a way to contact her just via email and Morgs and Friends. They're both tested and safe vendors. But the other reason why I really love them is that the Shiggy Flower Fairy has all pre-made things. So you don't have to order it and then wait for it to be made. And Morgs and Friends does the same thing. She actually has a website. So if you buy something, you know it's already made, ready to ship out. A lot of times what happens with vendors, and it's not you know anything against the vendor, it's just that they get kind of backlogged. They're trying to do custom pieces. And so you might it might take months for you to actually get your order. And that can be frustrating, especially for new owners that are not familiar with how that really works in the sugar glider industry. I definitely would recommend uh, supporting these two vendors and if they have things in stock, snatching them up. If you don't have Facebook, I know Liz the Shiggy Flower Fairy is willing to uh, correspond via email. So those are two places that I recommend, but I'll also include some more links to vendors that I recommend and trust in the description box. So you want to make sure that your cage is filled with items that are safe. That's the biggest thing, you don't want to have wheels or toys or things like that that are not going to be safe. You definitely want to have a wheel. I just want to clarify here, a wheel is a must have, a disc is a bonus. Every glider has to have a safe wheel. That is a staple in every cage. And a glider go round or a freedom disc. My gliders tend to like the glider go round better than the freedom disc, but every glider is different as far as their preferences. So I'm gonna put links in the description for safe wheels. Again, I, do, I personally do not recommend uh, getting them from Exotic Nutrition. Uh, they are just not, in my opinion, the highest quality. And there's also been accusations of, that they're not safe, that there's been injuries. I can't confirm that. I can't say that that's fact, but that has been things that I've heard. Safe toys, safe wheel, nice large cage. I'll also include the links for the cage. I have my cage is actually three double critter nations all put together into one big cage. So it is much larger than the recommended standard size for the colony that I have. I could probably get away with one double critter nation and I have three times that amount of space. But like I said, I'm an advocate for giving gliders as much space as you have. So when you're hanging your toys and your items that you bought for the cage, you want to make sure that you're thinking about the safety involved with that. So if you're hanging something that has a pulley or loose long chains or uh, vines or things like that, you don't want to hang that so close to the wheel that when the wheel rotates around that the chain could get caught up in the wheel. So you wanna move that a little ways away. If you're gonna have pulleys and things like that, that you're trying to encourage tail carrying. So tail carrying is where a glider will actually put their body through a bracelet that's hanging in the cage, either loose or attached to a toy. They'll wrap their tail around it and then they'll bring it into their sleeping pouch. So you wanna think that through. If you're gonna have a, a pulley toy, it would be good to have some pulley toys hanging close by to where the pouches are because you don't wanna discourage them from working so hard to get that all looped around and only to get to the, the pouch and it's not long enough to actually fit in there. So you wanna take that into consideration. So spacing with the wheel, having it far enough from the wheel that it's not gonna get tangled up at the farthest extension. You also, if it's gonna, if it's a long pulley, you don't want that long pulley to be able to have them, sometimes they'll just leap and grab onto a pulley and ride it down. If they ride it down and it splats against the ground, sometimes it could be fine, sometimes that could be dangerous. So if it's a really long pulley, you wanna make sure that that's hooked to the top of the cage and you wanna test that at the, that the furthest extension that it's not going to touch the ground. If it's a really short pulley, that may not be as big of a difference, but if it's a long one, there's a safety concern there. Another thing I really like to put in cages is floor toys and toy boxes. So toy boxes can be hung up Floor toys can be on literally the floor, the base of the cage, or if you're 
cage has shelving, you could put them on the shelving. I personally, right now, I actually prefer not having shelving in my cage. I feel like uh, it allows for easier cleaning, plus most of the floor toys are on the base of the cage anyway. So I found it just kind of was an extra place, a little platform for them to eat. But what I've been doing is I've been adding bridges, uh, fleece bridges into the cage so that they can pop there and eat. And then that's easier to, for me to clean than taking out the trays um, and wiping those down so often. So, but you could put a tray up, up higher in the cage and then have a floor toy up there or on the base. You can get floor toys from secondhand stores, but you wanna read up on and watch videos about safety on that. I'll include some videos about that in the description box. I have a video talking about how you can get really good deals at thrift stores. And then I also have another video all about toy safety. So I really recommend watching both of those videos. I know that the research part and getting these gliders is a lot of information to take in, but I really do think it's important, especially the toy safety part. That's something that's like life and death for your gliders. You don't want to have injuries that happen just because you didn't want to do the research and figure out ways to prevent that. So I really recommend watching those videos or joining other Sugar Glider Facebook groups that talk about toy safety and toy making and things like that. You could also read up on, the, a lot of them have a lot of good files. Uh, hanging toys, uh, floor toys, and then I, I like to put, I like to put quite a few floor toys on the base of my cage, but what I'll do is I'll add one and then I'll wait a couple days and then I'll add another one and then I'll wait a couple days and add another one so that it's not just all there all at once because gliders are kind of like toddlers they get used to things. And so you want to try to keep some variety in their toys as much as possible. Floor toys are a really easy way to do that. And then I usually have a toy box at the base of the cage as well. Uh, and then I try to swap out the types of toys that they have in their toy box. You can also put toy boxes up higher in the cage. You want to make sure that the items that you're putting in your toy box, if they were to throw them out of the toy box and they hit a glider, it wouldn't hurt them. So you wouldn't want to put anything really heavy if you're going to put your toy box up higher. But you could have a smaller toy box that you have either hanging on the side of the cage as long as it's secured. Um, or you could have one up on one of those upper shelves as well. Um, another thing that people like to use in cages are hides. So like little areas where gliders can go in and they can eat or they can play with something. Those can also double as toy boxes. I personally don't uh, use those a lot in my cage because I like to be able to get my gliders out for bonding whenever I want. And I find that it's very difficult to get them out of those hides. I've kind of steered away from using those very much, uh, but my gliders do have a couple that they really enjoy, especially the little coconut ones. And so I do incorporate those into the cage sometimes as well. Another thing that I have done, you'll notice in my cage, is the whole back wall is actually covered in glider safe vines that I've handmade. I'm gonna make a video on how to do that, uh, but basically what you need is uh, plastic chain zip ties, mini links, and glider safe plastic leaves. I get these from a variety of places, including Hobby Lobby, uh, thrift stores, and what you do is you clean them really thoroughly you check for fraying to make sure that they're not going to fray when you when they get pulled on. Uh, they don't can't have any wire and you don't want to have them bleed a lot. You don't want to have dye that just runs off of it. So you need to soak them in really, really hot water, make sure they don't bleed. So as you don't want the gliders to ingest those dyes. The whole backside of my cage is covered in vines. I'm not 100% done with that project, but when I am, I will be making a video on how exactly I went about doing that. But I you can also hang toys on the backside of the cage. I found that it's easier to not, as far as like swapping out toys and things like that, not to have a lot on the back side of the cage that have kind of made that one big kind of foraging hide area personally. And then I have things hanging in the front and in the middle of the cage. It just makes it easier for reaching in and pulling things out and swapping things out, uh, rotating the toys out personally. And I like the look of it. You can definitely have toys hanging on the sides, front and the back of the cage. If you're going to hang things close to the doors, you want to make sure that you're thinking about when you open and close the doors, if things are going to get stuck, if that's going to be kind of a pain. Um, so you want to hang them in a way and test the doors open and close, make sure that they're not going to get um, caught up. 
With a double critter nation, the way that the doors open, you really can't have fleece bridges or anything like that hanging from the back to the front because then you won't be able to open that door. So I tend to hang mine across this way, across the ceiling, or I hang mine underneath the little ledges that I still have in there. I don't have the trays, but I have the ledges, so I have more things that I can hang on. And the gliders will just balance on those little bases that the trays go on in the Double Critter Nation. You don't actually have to have the tray all the time. And you could swap those out. Sometimes you could have the tray, sometimes you couldn't. It just kind of would be another way to add variety to a cage. And then I also, as far as setting up the cage, I like to have one designated area where I have water and food. I don't have any gliders that are food aggressive. So if you did have gliders that were protective over their food and there was some food aggression going on, you definitely want to have two different feeding stations, one maybe on the bottom left hand corner of the cage and one in the upper right hand corner of the cage. So they're far enough away from each other that there's not going to be any food aggression. Sometimes I'll hang one on the side of the cage and then put one closer to the floor on one of the floor toys or something like that. But I, I don't use uh, kitchens. Uh, my gliders tend to like to grab something and then run away with it anyway. So the kitchen doesn't really work that well. My diet is not super liquidy. So therefore I don't really need to use kitchens as much as some other people that have more liquidy diets might need to do. That's what I choose to do. And then I also have a water source um, I used to use water silos, but I've switched to using one dome enclosure that, that has fresh water that I change out daily. I found that it was easier to keep the water clean. I kept having issues with the silos, with the cleanliness of them, but also with them like tipping and spilling and things like that. So I'm actually using one large water source that's very secure and it has a dome so they're not going to get poop and pee and stuff in it very easily and then it gets washed out every day. Personally, I have one kind of corner that has the food and the water and I have that hanging on the walls for the most part. I like to have their sleeping pouches on the doors towards the front of the cage so you're not reaching into the cage to try to get your glider out. It's easier for bonding. I think it's a little bit less stressful for them because you're not intruding in their space, especially if you have a glider that's not super bonded. So I personally like to hang my sleeping pouches on the doors. I usually have at least two, if not three different places where they, three, <laughs> three different places where they can sleep. 99% of the time my gliders choose to all sleep together. So either on the doors or close by to the door where it's easy for me to access them. I don't typically put them on the back side of the cage or even on the sides. One thing I really recommend you doing is set up the cage the way that you think you might want it or what you think your glider might enjoy and then watch them play for a little while. See what they actually gravitate to see um, if something is maybe a little bit too unstable, they're not really utilizing it very much. One thing that my gliders love are fleece bridges that they can kind of enjoy the top canopy. That's one thing that I didn't used to do. Um, I used to kind of keep the toys more in the midsection and then maybe have a couple hanging things at the top. But lately I've been trying to make like a separate canopy layer for them with vines or bridges or a combination of the two things so that they can really kind of perch at the top and look down. Um, I notice that they really enjoy that and they're, they're down low in the floor toys and they're up high. And then I think that the pulleys and the, the loose bracelets that I keep in the cage, I know that they do use them because I see evidence of that in the morning, as well as them taking things out of the toy box and running around with them. I know that they really enjoy that but it's a little bit harder for you to witness that unless you're watching them literally all night. When gliders are really bonded to you, sometimes they don't fully play when you're there because they're kind of hoping that you're gonna come and interact with them. <laughs> so it's a little bit hard to actually catch them really playing with their toys. But when you have a pulley, you can start it off where both of the bracelets are lined up at the, at the beginning of the night. And then if they're off kilter, then you know that they were interacted with at some point. Again, swapping out the toys, keeping a, a wide variety of toys, I think is really important to just keep their brain stimulated. I don't change all of them out all, you know, every day or anything like that, 
but each week I try to have at least something new in the cage or changed, maybe it's a different spot, it's new items in the toy box, maybe I switch out one of the hanging toys for another one. So it's not a complete redo of the cage every week, but something that's different. You don't wanna change everything all at once because gliders can get very protective of their cage and they they want to feel at home so you don't want to switch out everything and deep clean everything all at once they can get very uneasy about that because they like to be able to smell themselves they like to know that hey this is my cage you don't want them to feel like they're going into a brand new cage every week so don't over clean or over change the toys but definitely changing things up periodically is a really good way for enrichment for your gliders I also love having a couple spots in the cage that are just kind of standard kibble spots where they're enclosed and they're not going to um, you know, get dirty. I have a couple really great ones. One came from the Shuggy Flower Fairy and I love it. It's the cutest thing. And then one came from Amazon. So I'll put um, that information in the description box. Again, my feeding stations and my water stations. I'll put links for the water silos that I used to use if you wanna use those and the water source that I use now. The water silos, I just found, like I said, the main reason is it was hard to really keep them clean. They're so long um, and then there's multiple parts and I found that even though I was rinsing them out and cleaning them out regularly, the little rim uh, would tend to get like little like mold pieces and stuff like that in it. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna switch to something else. So this is what I'm doing right now. Who knows what I'll be doing in the future, but so far it seems to be working out really well. I hope that was helpful. I hope that uh, as you set up your cage, uh, eventually you'll find your own rhythm, your own way that you like to set things up. Like I said, there's not really any right or wrong way as long as it's safe and your gliders are enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day. Again, feel free to check out my merch store. I love to see how you guys are accessorizing and I love to see people wearing my merch. I follow some people on TikTok that have bought my merch and it's just so fun to watch them you know, visit different places and see my merch just pop up. So I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye. So <laughs> there's not really any right or wrong way unless as all right. <laughs> or a, um, But you can definitely have cage um, that the that the um, so um, there's not really right any like there's.